Good morning. Welcome to Self Arm United Church Worship. This is the second Sunday after the Epiphany, January 16, 2022. We acknowledge that we are located on the traditional indigenous territory of Coast Salish peoples, that we are guests in this land. Come, let us worship God. Calling one another for worship. How precious is the steadfast love of God all people may take refuge in the shadow of God's embrace. Christ is the fountain of life. In Christ we behold the light of God. Let us pray. Holy God, through signs of grace, you reveal your glory to all the world. Open our eyes to the hidden and surprising wonders you perform, that we may believe with our minds and trust in our heart that you alone are the Lord of all creation. Through Christ, in the power of the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. Let us say this offertory prayer together. God is a generous giver of gifts that flow like a river from the fountain of life. Bring offerings and tributes with thanks and praise, for the gifts we give are the gifts of God. Amen.
Our scripture reading today is John chapter 2, verses 1 to 11. On the third day there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what concern is that to you and to me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Now standing there were six stone water jars for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding twenty or thirty gallons. Jesus said to them, Fill the jars with water, and they filled them up to the brim. He said to them, Now draw some out and take it to the chief steward. So they took it. When the steward tasted the water that had become wine and did not know where it came from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew, the steward called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first, and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this, the first of his signs, in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. Listen for God's good news. Thanks be to God. Before I begin, let me say that in-person worship will be out of the question for a while. We said we would take two weeks to do video uh, in the beginning, but uh, it seems that it takes more time. It seems it is wise to keep doing this until the, the time that is safe for us to return to in-person worship. So uh, hold on, my friend, and hope that we will see each other very soon. Today, the story is about Jesus turning water into wine. Why do we love this story so much? I guess, is it because of the miracle or it is because it is wine? I have listened to this story since I was 17, and I believed in all my hearts that Jesus was amazing. I love the fact that the party could continue with such joy. But still, I want to ask today, especially today, what's wrong with giving your guest water? Now, an alternative sermon title can be, What's Wrong With No More Wine? I know, I know, I know. Before you question my rationale, let me say this is a marvelous story to invite our trust in Jesus. That is, to the first century audience, this story was meant to convince them Jesus was indeed the Messiah. I get it. I do love the story. It gives me so much to think about, especially at times I don't fully understand or comprehend what is going on in the world. Hearing this story teaches me not to give up hope. It speaks loud and clear that it is the way to follow Jesus. As Christians, we don't shun reasons. But there are times faith goes beyond cognitive understanding and logic. This story is a perfect example. John's story seems to paint that this was the very first miracle Jesus did, and his mother, Mary, was involved. How was she involved? She simply told the servants to do what Jesus told them. Wine may be out, but water jars were always there. These are for the purification purposes in Jewish homes. John's gospel has a unique way to tell the story about Jesus. John was more like a theologian, giving us theological statements and concepts. Before I go on, a footnote must be made. John wasn't saying Jesus encouraged excessive drinking. Instead, Theologically, it is John's way to say the hour, although not yet arrived, has come. And there were signs 
to show up Jesus' glory. The time has come to show the world that in life with this Jesus, alternatives exist. Though we don't always fully understand why and how, just like what happened in this story. By phrasing the sermon title this way, I realize that I most likely am raising questions that are not warranted in the text. You may say I overread the text, and I agree. I mostly have. But when I'm sitting in the comfort of my own home, have clean running water flood the tap, when I may as well enjoy a glass of wine while reflecting on this text, God forbid, I cannot help but see what privileges I have in doing so. How I take things for granted when millions of people still struggle for clean drinking water. Read a text like this in our time. If I don't critique my lifestyle, I fail miserably as a human being. What is the monetary value of a drinkable glass of water, you may say? My friends, water consumption is a life and death issue. It is a justice issue, a stewardship issue, and a religious issue. We who live in wealthy parts of Canada may not need to think twice about it, but our indigenous brothers and sisters who live in some parts of Canada still struggle with clean drinking water. Talking about this in 2022, it is totally unacceptable. None of us can live without water. I wish we all advocate for clean drinking water for all people. Wine, let it run out. In the Hebrew Bible, water is the means of cleansing or purification. Water heals, as can be seen from the stories of Laman. John the Baptist used the waters of the Jordan to cleanse people's sins. During Jesus' baptism, water became a context for divine revelation, and the list goes on and on. This is just to remind us that in Christianity, there is a creational thinking that underlines the significance of water in human communities as life giver and sustainer of this complex ecosystem. While we, most of us, are doing okay, it is the poor who becomes the victim. Clean water often becomes the entity of the rich and wealthy. So to conclude, I ask, do I rejoice when Jesus turned water into wine? Sure, I do, but I rejoice more when all people can get access to a glass of clean water. And on many occasions, I think giving people a glass of clean water is more important to continually give them wine. It gives me even more joy when these partying people completely understand why wine is no longer available. And upon knowing this, they file no complaints to the host. Instead, they say, wow, everybody serves the good wine first, and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk. But you stop them from getting drunk in the first place by hiding the inferior wine. Instead, you give them clean drinking water. Well done. Amen. Let us pray together. In peace, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, in every gathering of Christian believers, you bring together a people of gifts, strengths, and needs to manifest the universal body of Christ. We pray for your church throughout the world that every con local congregation may live as sisters and brothers in harmony, showing forth the light of Christ to the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
For the sake of the common good of all people, you create human societies to be places of refuge and human flourishing. We pray to the leaders of the governments, and especially for our leaders, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau and Premier John Horgan. May they receive wisdom to exercise government with true justice grounded in mercy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your son Jesus performed the first of his signs of glory at a wedding in Cana. We pray for all who make covenant to live together for mutual support and love, for parents and children, for the aged and the young. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, you are the giver of all good things. Receive our prayers that we offer for ourselves and for our world. Comfort us in this time of unknown. In all things, grant us the courage to exercise your gifts for the good of our world, through Christ, in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the spirit of love flowing like water across the face of the earth fill you with every gift of the good of the world and the blessing of God, eternal source, fountain of life, and giver of gifts be with you always. of the Lord be with you always.